How's it going, Vlad? Thanks for doing this. Uh, yeah, uh, you're welcome. I'm excited to to be on here. It's my my first time being on a on a podcast, so thank you also for inviting me. Um, oh. Doing all right. Uh, just came back from the zero. I actually went out of the zero early because I uh, I got ill, um, so I didn't do the last two stages. Um, but I'm better now already, so we're, we're back on the bike. That's awesome, man. Kudos on wearing that white jersey for a few stages. That had to be feeling pretty good. Yeah, that was nice. I wore it like almost for the the first half of the of the Giro. Um, you know, it's it's special um, to wear it in a in a big race like that. Mm -hmm. Was that one of your big targets for the year, or how do you where are you looking at? Where does that sit amongst the other races that you have done and the ones coming up in the remainder of the season? Um, for sure, it's a big race, um, but I wouldn't say I really targeted it. Um, me personally, I, I, I like to perform at every race that I, I race. Um, so like every race is almost a target for me. Um, I wouldn't say I did anything like really special in preparation for this Giro. Um, I mean, I'm also not trying to win the general. Um, you know, I was trying to be good on a few stages, which were good for me um but for sure it's a it's a race you want to to be good at um because uh all the good riders are there so everybody will will look at that race to to compare a bit you know um mm -hmm. but uh i wouldn't go as far to say that you know this is a this was hanging on on my wall above my bed like for a month now and i was looking forward to it uh that might be good though. That's a little bit less pressure. I think athletes, sometimes we overthink the big race and we start doing all these different things. And then you go to another big race. That's not a priority and have this amazing result because there was less pressure, no expectations set on yourself. The mind didn't go crazy. Um, can, this is actually really interesting. Can you go in a little bit more on your comment of wanting to be ready for every race? Because it seems and this is, I've been sort of trying to pick at this a little bit more. It seems in the last few years, there's less talk of like peaking and making your one big race. And the season has become very long for a lot of athletes. Um, a couple other guys have sort of brought this up. And how do you view this? Uh, like, go in on that. Uh, yeah, like from my uh, perspective, um, of course, um, I like to be good at every race because like you said, if you peak towards, uh, if or if you make like a big goal and, you know, something happens, it's so easy nowadays for something to go wrong. I mean, it always has been, you know, a small illness, uh, a crash, and, and it's done uh, months of preparation maybe. So that's always a, a risk factor. I know that, um, you know, for a professional rider, like a GC rider, of course, it's you're going to have to to do that um, if you want to be good at a Grand Tour or something. But uh, you can also... It's your job. You get paid to do it. You need to take that risk to prepare towards that race. Um, for us, it's different. You know, um, there aren't also really that big races that we need to like be good at perform at. So uh, that's why I, I like to to be good at, at every race I start because you also don't know how many chances you will have to to go for a result. You need to like take every chance you have, uh, not take any for granted. Um, because you know, like for example, Perry Roubaix, I was, I was feeling super good, but I I ended up crashing two times and had a mechanical. So, um, yeah, I don't take anything for granted, and you need to go for every chance there is. Um, uh, the peaking stuff, um, for sure, it still happens. Um, peaking, but it's not really towards one race. It's more towards the period. Um, so. I also still do that um like towards the the Giro and the month before that uh I kind of peaked uh, it was like a, a month at like a top shape period almost um and then now we let it go down again we decrease the training um and then we we build up again so it is still peaking but it's not towards a, a single race um it's more like towards uh about a, a month or two months uh, of time two months is maybe a bit long it's more like a month that you're really going to be at a at a top shape um and you kind of need to look for yourself where you want to fit that 
And do you have a recipe for that? Like, okay, hey, I want to start this month and that's in four weeks. I'm going to do like a big week of overload and that might be extra hours and more intensity. And then do you do something the second week or what's your recipe if you can share that with people? Um, of course, I don't make the, the recipe myself. It's that uh, we have a, a very smart trainer to, to make that for us uh, who went to school for that to know what to do. Who is your uh, coach? So do you have a coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the team. Um, okay. Everybody at, at DSM, uh, the development team has a, the same coach. Okay. Um, Xavier. Uh, so he makes the, the trainings for us. He he makes the, the planning. Um, but yeah, it, it, it starts with uh, with base training um, and some, some tempo work like that. Um, it's not immediately that you're doing a high intensity efforts. And it's, yeah, it's like, it's like you would think it's just just the logical way of how it goes the closer you get um you know the the more intense the training becomes the volume becomes a bit less and then uh right before uh, like the last week uh, or so you would go into a kind of a tapering um decreasing a bit to to be fresh towards your goal that's awesome. And so did you follow this type of pattern when you came in third on the podium at Worlds, which congratulations on that. That's incredible. Thank you. Um, well, that was uh, that was different. Um, I think I, it's hard for me to, to look back now. Uh, I, isn't it? It's I, so I, funny to look back on training sometimes, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Um, it was also there were quite some we were doing some racing at the moment at, at the time as well. So, you know, it's not really easy to fully make a like a structured training plan when you're also having races in between mm -hmm. um but if i remember uh, i think the last race i did before worlds um must have been like around 20 or 18 days before worlds so i had quite a period without racing before worlds and um the the race before that i did was a five day race in italy and after that i recovered for a while um and then I just didn't do any base training anymore because you were at the end of the season. You already had a lot of uh, base training in the legs at that point. And uh, I also knew Worlds was going to be my last race. So at that point, it was um, actually very specific work towards the Worlds. Um, so it was like short efforts, one minute, two minute, uh, five minute efforts, um, kind of to mimic... Um, the the strain we were gonna have in the race, like the going high in the in the lactate, short recovery and and back again. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of did uh, did some uh, yeah intense training before the worlds. That's awesome. I appreciate you sharing all that. It's real. I think that's gonna help a lot of athletes to, because it's easy, especially for athletes that don't have access to a coach or are trying to put their things together. Maybe they're just getting into the sport. It's there's so much information now, it's sometimes hard to simplify it down. And so I think that kind of gives people a good kind of big picture how they can look at their own training. Uh, getting into the nitty grittier things of training, do you use power, heart rate, RPE, a mix of all? And kind of when do you use those? Yeah, mainly uh, the power and the heart rate. We don't, I don't really, um, you know, the, the heart rate is a good indicator um, to, to look at uh, more afterwards after the training um i don't really use the heart rate uh, in the training itself mm -hmm. uh, then i look more at the power um but of course uh, the power is uh, you know 250 watts on today is not the same as 250 watts tomorrow um, but the heart rate will often be a, a good indicator of what your body feels about uh, what you're doing um so i use both but for efforts i mainly look at the power usually Okay. And, and then you had talked about different times leading up to some of the big races, you know, cutting the volume down, getting more intensity in. What do you do like hour wise per week? I know that's going to be a, it depends on the time of season, but do you kind of vet, naturally gravitate towards volume or do you someone that likes to just go hard? Um, I think well, like I would say in the past, definitely volume. Um, I would do, you know, mostly just endurance training uh, and then like a few efforts here and there. Um, but now, of course, I, I follow uh, more structured from uh, from the trainer. But I think we also still do uh, a good amount of uh, 
of a uh, of endurance. Um, almost every ride we do have some some work in the trainings. Um, but uh, it's not really high intensity, so I would still almost count it as endurance rides. Um, so I th I think I I do quite a lot of volume, but uh, you know, that's my personal <laughs> opinion. I think uh, if you compare it to a guy like Artem, uh, you would think I'm a track rider. So. <laughs> Well, so for those that don't know who Artem is, if you're new to the podcast, Artem Schmidt is a guy from Georgia that we had linked up. He recently was on the podcast and he knows Vlad. And yeah, Artem does some crazy long rides that I was surprised that I was like, does your coach know you do these? Like, yeah, he makes me do them. I was like, okay, so we're going to try and get Gleb on the podcast at some point. But yeah, it's funny. What's the, so when you say work on those rides, you talk about like little tempo bits or. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cadence work, uh, like strength work, um, some tempo work. There's a lot of uh, different kind of little exercises that uh, can be done without really putting a, a lot of strain on the body and they have their uh, their own benefits. That's awesome. Speaking of strain on the body, do you get are you getting in the gym or is it not worth your time? Uh, we do gym, yeah, but uh, it's it's quite limited. Um, you know, it's uh, it's like the, the deadlift, the squad uh bulgarian split squats or uh yeah i don't really know the the names but it's like it's mostly like legs it's like compound movements also so you do use the the upper body upper body a little but uh it's not really like a uh, specific uh muscles that we're gonna train it's more like a a movement okay does that change throughout the season at all like base season you do more gym and during the season or is it kind of like just a little bit throughout the whole year yeah, yeah, it, it changes uh quite a lot. I mean, the the it's always the same exercise, but uh, the thing that changes is uh, the intensity and the amount, uh, and also how you perform the exercise. So um, during the winter, it's uh, it's like the the build phase. Um, then you're gonna like, you know, use the heavy weight, and you're gonna do a lot of sets. You're gonna like build the muscle, and it's uh, it's a bit more uh more frequent uh, in in the training program. Uh, and then once you're going uh, towards the, the first races of the season, you actually lower the weight and you focus more on um, doing the set like more explosively, like going up faster, like jumping almost with the weight that you feel the, the weight's actually dangling on the bar. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, yeah, when you're in the season, uh, you kind of have to maintain. You're not really building anymore. It's more to uh, like, you know, keep the muscle there so that it doesn't disappear. Do you have anything, the last question on the gym, do you have anything when you're in season that you kind of use to make sure you're not lifting too much? Um, like one, one thing that comes to mind, I always try to like avoid burn because as an athlete, it's like I get in the gym and I'm like, oh, I'm like super motivated today and I go and lift too much and then my ride is crap. Is there anything that you do so you're like, okay, dude, blood, don't go crazy today or how do you kind of keep that in check? Oh, uh, well, I, it's usually uh, the same weight you kind of use once you know uh, yourself a bit. Um, you kind of have to find out for yourself, um, like, if I use this weight, is it going to hurt tomorrow or not? Yeah. Uh, and once you kind of found that, you can use that for a while, but, you know, also after a while, it'll get stronger and then you need to uh, adjust a little bit. Um, but like right now, uh, like in the season, I use a weight so that definitely the day after I, I didn't feel that I went to the gym. Otherwise, I, I went a bit too heavy. Cool. That's awesome. What do you have any favorite workouts that you feel like, you know, just really get you going as you're getting into the race season? Maybe so you've done your base training, you're kind of reducing the gym time and there's some sessions that your coach puts on that you're just like, oh, I love doing this. Um. Yeah, I, I like going hard. So I like I like efforts where you get to push. Um. Yeah, you know, sometimes that hurts, um, but uh, sometimes it's also fun. It depends on the day. If you're having a good day and uh, you get to go really hard, it can be really fun. Um, but if you're suffering, uh, then it's like the worst day ever. Uh, yeah. But I would say that actually all my favorite trainings are like like when you're just, uh, just coming out of winter um, and you get to like finally go out of zone one into zone two, you get zone two efforts. And uh, if if you think now when you're in in shape, zone two efforts, it's like it's nothing, you know, it's not you wouldn't even call it an effort, but then it's it's an effort, a zone two effort. So you just like, 
yeah, it's, you have to push a bit harder, but it's actually probably the most fun because uh, it's uh, the easiest of efforts, I would say. <laughs> so are you, when you talk about zone two, like zone two on a five zone model, so like endurance riding? Um, I don't, uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know which model we exactly use because we have uh, we have quite a lot of zones. Okay. Um, but it, it is, yeah, it's, it's endurance. It's, uh, it's still like an endurance. All, all day pace. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in winter, you ride a lot of zone one, like super easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. See, really us smart. Americans, we like to ride too hard, is what every European tells us. We had a couple guys that worked with us in Slovenia, and they're like, you guys ride too hard. And so we actually will call it like Euro endurance, like zone one, two. Um, it's been a change for me personally of trying to ride easier. And my last coach was in the UK and he's like, dude, like dial it down. This is not endurance to us. And so it's always, I'm always curious what people like, what the easy ride actually is for, for people. Well, when you ride your endurance ride, are you able to breathe out of the nose only? Probably not, to be honest. No. And it's, it's funny that you bring that up. I was just, um, I'm actually a big proponent of like breath work, this company Aerofit. I use their device a lot. And I've been looking up different exercises that athletes who don't want to buy into buying a device should work on like box breathing. And I think it's like seven, seven, nine, eleven or something. Because the breath work to me is really important. And I know how important nasal breathing is. And I was thinking of today's ride. I'm like, I should go out and just like practice more nasal breathing. Um, so is that your gauge? Only breathe through the nose? Um, no, not specifically. I, I probably also use I use my mouth most of the time. But if you if you would try to like not use your mouth for breathing, um, you should be able to do fine with just your nose. Um, otherwise, you might be going too fast. But uh, you can yeah, if you're at the at the top end of the of the zone uh it might be that you know it's maybe uncomfortable to to breathe through the nose and you're still actually in the zone but for sure if you're able to breathe comfortably through the nose you you won't be going too hard so i'm going to be thinking about you when i'm going too hard or if i'm like getting a little bit out of breath I'm like damn it Vlad, ruining my i want to go faster today um what's your so we're talking about intervals you're kind of talking about these long rides do you prefer riding solo or do you like getting the gang together and do you have a good group of training buddies that you can go do a long endurance ride with uh i like to do solo actually i prefer to go alone is that just get in your own mindset and just yeah, yeah. because i like to listen to to music when i'm uh when i'm riding um and then you know when you're with somebody it's uh it's like uh <laughs> Not the best behavior but it's a bit inappropriate to like kind of ignore yeah. them and just listen to your yeah. earbud yeah. yeah what are you yeah. listening to these days um oh just a lot of different stuff um i like a lot of different genres um of course uh when i'm going on an effort it's probably a bit more a uh, dance or electronic um then when i'm just doing a easy ride it can be whatever comes on the on the list cool what do you think over the years, uh, you're a young guy, and so I'm curious where this will go down the road for you, but what have you learned about cycling that's made you better at cycling? Oh, um, I wouldn't say this only goes for for cycling, but um, just sports in general, um, maybe even, even you could say going as far as say life. Um, that rest is the most important thing um, and that, you know, everything has like a, a time and place. You need to know when that those extra 30 minutes, you need to know when they matter. Uh, there's a time and place for that. You need to know when it matters to push a little harder or when it matters to, you know, skip a training or not. Um, you know, it's it's maybe when you're just getting into the sport, it's maybe uh people will like follow what's exactly what's written down or uh, or will worry about it because they didn't be able to 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 do something that was on the plan uh but i feel like that is something that that comes with experience uh, and as you get to know yourself uh, you also get to know what your body needs what it can handle um that kind of stuff and how much rest it needs how much training it needs so don't be a robot to the training plan and training yeah, peaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, there's always like a one line that I want to clip out and send to athletes that just overthink this. And that 
that line is going to help so many people, man. It's going to be awesome. Um, is there anybody in the in the ranks above you that you kind of see their training, you see their racing, you might look up to that you might be like, that's the type of rider I want to become? Um, I don't really look at a lot of people's trainings. Um, I'm not really, you know, I have Strava, but I'm not really on there all the time. Um, but for sure, there's there's riders that I I look up to. Um, it's it's easy to point out riders like uh, uh like Wout van Aert, uh, you know, the the big guys. Um, but uh, somebody like Michael Matthews, he's a he's a rider that's that really impresses me. I think. He goes, he's not uh, underrated, but I think people forget the amount of times he's been on a world championship podium and how he's actually always been there throughout the years, for example. Um, I think uh, Cole Brelli, yeah, when he used to still ride, I think he was a, a rider that really um, was kind of the, the, the type of rider that, that I would, uh, would be at that time. I don't know, of course, what I'm going to become... Um, in a few years, um, you know, people still end up changing even at, at this age. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, like, just this year suddenly is the, the first year that I've actually been doing really, really well in time trials. Um, that came out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> so it will be interesting where, where I end up, of course. It's hard to predict. That's awesome. Now, I think you're right about Matthews. I think a lot of, like, general public cyclists – you could talk about this guy and they would not realize how talented and his Palmares is he's there and been there so many times. I think you're dead on about that. What do you, uh, so we're in the middle of June when we're recording this, what do you see as things you want to most improve on this season? Um, that's a good one. Um, I feel like finishing it, finishing, a. Finishing it off in the race, um, I feel like I've 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 gone into the the final quite a few times now, um, especially like a a bunch pin final. Even though I know that's not my ideal uh, way to end the race, like an actual bunch pin, I feel like I'm still able to win these. Um, so that's why I, I I'm not gonna say like oh yeah, but that's that's not something for me. Like if I have a chance, like I need to be like okay, why didn't I win this? Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I feel like um, one, if you go to a bunch sprint, I feel like there's 20 guys that are strong enough to win the bunch sprint. Um, but like sprinting is, is such an art. Um, mm -hmm. It's much more than just the physical capability. It's really the timing, the positioning is, is so important, um, especially also the working together with your teammates. Um, we have a, a young squad uh, this year, so... Um, you know, we all still need to get dialed in a bit. The the boys around me also need to get used to the to the heat and the fire you 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 see in the final because it gets really intense and it's easy to get get pushed around, um, and that costs you in the end. Mm. That that is a really good way of describing just the intensity at the finish of a race. And if someone hasn't had the chance yet. You know, I think even for an amateur, when you start to go to bigger races that have 120 guys, 130 guys, you know, it's if you live in a small town or something, you might not. And we're not in Belgium where there's races all the time. A lot of people don't get to experience like a 60 man finish and something even bigger than that. So that's a good way to kind of like encapsulate the heat. I love that. Yeah. What do you think is one of the number one things in your daily routine that you do that has a big return to your success in the sport? And you've kind of already hit on rest, which is definitely crucial. So maybe something besides that. Oh, uh, I don't really have like uh, things that stick out as a daily routine. I think uh, I live a quite a, a regular life. I don't really do a uh, special things. Um, and I think that, that that might be even it. I have a lot of rest in my head um, and I don't go, uh, you know, it, it's it's good to look for the marginal gains. It's good to, to look for every last percentage, but some guys are doing stuff that, you know, does it help? Does it not help? You know, it's so, it, it, it's so hard to know these days. Um, so just, uh, just having fun and, and being able to disconnect uh, from from cycling is also uh, something you need to be good at. Um, you know, once you're on the bike, you need to focus for it. But also when I'm here, I like to 
to still be a just a, a teenager, you know, just uh, living a, a regular life. And I think that that really helps me to because that you know you don't stress about uh, about things then and uh, to have rest in your head also then. Less stress, better results, better training, better recovery. I think you nailed it with saying detach from it a little bit. It's easy to become neurotic and overly focused and just, yeah, it's that's a really good tip. It's very wise words, man, for a teenager. What is uh, what is something that, I guess that doesn't have to be somebody older than you, but maybe, and it doesn't have to be just cycling, but what's one of the best pieces of, pieces of advice that you feel like you've received? Ooh, um, so that's a good question. Um, for sure, I've received a lot of advice throughout my life. Um, it's never really been in in the form of a quote. Um, if you know what I mean, it could be a um, scenario. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a doesn't have to be like a thing on a plaque. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think definitely like the. The, the the rest um uh, i think it came from uh from uh, my uh, my doctor where i used to go he was he's also the doctor of the the national team um you know every time i went there he gave me like a a speech about how important rest is uh and how important it is to you know to to keep having fun and uh you know you know that everything is is relative um like uh you need to just you know focus on yourself and uh try to get the, the most out of yourself and, uh, you know, kind of look down at your own plate, not looking at what the rest is doing um, and just, you know, finding your own way. How do you do that? Because I think in this day and age with social media, especially your generation, I grew up without that for the most part. Is that just your personality to stay in your own dojo and stay focused? Because it's like, this guy's doing that and this person's at this race and that dude's talking about these intervals and da da da. Do you just block it out and stay in your lane uh yeah for sure uh one thing is, is blocking it out but um i think it's also you need to be a bit narcissistic uh in that and just thinking also yeah i don't care what he does because i know that what i do is better um or, or yeah that way you can think of it also when i see guys doing stuff it, it's kind of maybe uh, like yeah not a not a nice way of thinking at it, but you can also just think, yeah, okay, he's doing that, but he's not better than me. So <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you need to be a bit narcissistic also, and just uh, maybe sometimes believe, yeah, no, what I'm doing is is the, is, is the best way, um, and I don't care what he does, I don't care what she does, I'm doing my thing, and this is the way. Trust your plan, and know, yeah, have faith in that. That's awesome. Let's say you have a block, you go to a couple of races, you're just not feeling super on point. You know, you're not feeling like, hey, I'm not riding to my best ability. What sort of changes might you make or how might you look at that? How might you hit that reset button so you can try to turn the corner and get it going in a better direction? No, I would always compare to myself compared to a previous version of myself. Um, you know, if it's not going well compared to the others, well, you need to look at yourself. Am I underperforming or is this just is this the best I can do? Um, and the rest is just going faster than me. Um, but if, if, for example, I'm not performing on the level I used to perform, um, you know, you need to look at uh, how you're feeling, what changed. Um, there's a lot of things that can that can differ. Um, you know, you might be might be a bit sick. You don't even know it. You might be uh, over the top of the peak. Might be getting a bit of fatigue, or you just might start again and still not uh, on level um so that's that's a way to approach it uh, also maybe if you're like on on level but you're not making the right calls in the race uh that's that's a bit more tricky because you know that's uh, that's in the mind um and it's easy to um you know to to start losing sleep over it and then the more you start thinking about oh no I'm not making the right calls why am I suddenly not making the right decisions anymore you're going to keep uh keep thinking about it then you just need to you know take a moment and just uh start uh trusting your gut again and just um go with the flow and uh trust your intuition mm -hmm. and not think too much about it dude you got some really good answers to this i love it i think and for athletes that maybe haven't gone back like vlad saying looking at your previous self make sure you take notes on your training 
post ride notes, post race notes, when were you sick, all those little things, because at some point you might look back and if you don't label your rides, and this might sound very basic to some people, but I'll try and look back with other athletes to help them before we've worked together or something. And it's, there's no, no information from the athlete. That is so important. So make sure you're keeping a journal of some sort of what's going on in your training. You will be so thankful if you take that five minutes a day, two minutes a day, whatever it is, it makes a difference down the road. Um, Let's talk about nutrition. What are you doing on the bike? It's Are you uh, liquid calories? Do you like food? Does it depend on the type of ride or when you're racing? Kind of dive into that one. Um, when I'm on the on training, uh, it's usually the calories come from food. Um, but it can also be because maybe sometimes I'm just too lazy to open the, the mix to put it in my bottle. <laughs> uh, but I, on training, you, you're... You're in a luxury position because you can you can even stop if you need more food somewhere. Um, so yeah, in training you just need to make sure you're eating what it is. You know, of course you don't need to eat that stuff, but it doesn't really matter that much as long as it it's it's a good source of calories on, on the ride. Uh, and so sorry to jump in here. Anything from like a sandwich to a bar to a banana yeah. to just kind of whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course, it's easy to to take the bars for us because we get them from the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't really make a sandwich before the training, but it happens that we stop on training uh, to eat something because you know it's a nice day and we we want to enjoy life a bit. Um, but uh, in the race, uh, you know, it's it's we got the the mix in the bottles. We start with one uh, bottle of isotonic mix and one uh, bottle of uh, Pepto Pro. It's called. It's a uh, it's a it's a mix of isotonic uh, together with some protein already. Uh, mm-hmm. It's only in the in the bike if you start uh, one bottle. I think uh, it already starts a, a process of uh, repairing the muscle during the activity. Uh, I think is is the science behind it. Um, but then of course um, they try to make us eat as many bars as possible because it's it's the best for your gut. Um, to, so early in the race, usually when uh, it's a bit calm, well, usually it's a bit more in the middle because in the beginning they're jumping and that's 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 the part of the race I, I hate the most, I would say. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's bars. We got some some gummies as well. And then uh, gels um, once you're in, in the final and uh, it's getting more heated. Are you guys sponsored yeah. by a particular brand when you're talking about bars and gels? Yeah, we it's all it all comes from one brand, Sanas. Um, I think it's it's the team even helps um, helps uh, make some stuff and, like they work together quite closely. I think. Okay. What do you hate about the? I mean, you like going hard. Are you more of a diesel engine then? I guess than not liking the bram bram as everybody's trying to get in the break. Or no, what you- I, I I do like that, but um, it's just because usually I'm not the the guy that goes for those early breaks. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm usually more in a in a finisher kind of position so for me it's just trying to survive that as efficiently as possible um but it's such a headache because i feel like it's one of the most it's almost as dangerous as, as a as a finale mm-hmm. um but uh, the thing is there's the whole peloton is still almost intact at that point um and also when you're when it's uh, is the finale it, it, like for me it's fine to 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 burn some gas um to stay in a good position um and uh and stay at the front but during that jumping i, I also want to stay at the front because the more further you you back you are the more riders in front of you that can make a mistake and and you can go over them um but you know then it costs energy of course to to go to the front and that's energy that's gonna you know go up in the air it it gets you nowhere it just gets you to the front and uh yeah it, it's it's hard to 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 try and survive that as ecologically as possible to to waste uh, the least amount of uh, energy but uh, yeah the amount of times I've, I've cursed during a, a jumping phase because you think yeah they're finally gone and then somebody goes and everything starts over again mm. it's, uh, it can be a headache <laughs> what's uh what about nutrition off the bike you pretty clean eater naturally or there's, is there anything that you've had to kind of hone in as you got out of your early teen years and you're like okay I'm an athlete I need to really dial this in um i like to eat uh a lot of vegetables and fruits uh not really with uh, anything specifically in mind i just feel like that food makes me feel better Mm -hmm. um we also like to to cook here um uh some some nice dishes just 
kind of to impress ourselves or impress the guys around us. Look how good I can cook. Uh, but of course, we also uh, like to to eat some some food, some good food, somewhere at a restaurant or some some fast food from time to time. Uh, so it's not that we don't do that. Um, sometimes we're even in a luxury position that we we get to burn a lot more calories, so we we get to eat also a lot more. Uh, so for sure, I naturally eat pretty clean. Um, so it's not something that I need to focus on. Mm, cool. <laughs> When you talk about a lot of fruit, a lot of veggies, do you worry about fiber? I know sometimes people talk about going on more of like a low fiber diet before races. Do you do that at all? Or is it not really something you think is worth it? No, I just, I honestly can't be bothered to do that. I feel yeah. like it's, uh, it's like a, a marginal gain for a climber to to start really looking into that. I know, uh, I know it was a topic recently at the Giro, but it, I think it's something you only do like for three days. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I feel like there's also some risks with that, with like, you know, um, the bowel movements will slow down, I think, if you Dude. eat all that. Uh, and then you're going to be like, uh, I don't know what's the right word again. Um, like constipated. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like, I feel like that's, a, that's like if you're constipated in a race, that like that really sucks because you just feel so bloated and full yeah. and yeah. That was my biggest thing. I was really surprised. There was an athlete that once told me he was a pretty high level rider and he went into this and then the foods also that he then had to shift to because he was a huge veggie and fruit guy and it was like way more processed. And he's like, yeah, but the, the fiber, I'm retaining more water. And it just, I couldn't get my head in like wrapped around it. And the bowel movement thing was always huge for me. Like it's going to take you off your normal cycle. Now you're not feeling normal. And so, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. It's, it's, I don't know. I, I can't really connect with that one, but um, are you big into cycling tech and like technology and the gear of it? Oh, well, for sure. I like to, 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 to always know what the, what the new stuff is, but uh, I'm not, a, I don't have my own laboratory where I invent new stuff, but well, uh, anything interesting about your bike setup? Um, no, it's just that it's 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 not that I have asked for anything specifically. Um, I I in the beginning I asked for a double wrap bar tape, but that's because I had an injury on my hand where I couldn't close my finger fully. Um, but no, for the rest it's uh it's quite straightforward. I don't have anything uh interesting on on the setup. <laughs> anything that you think is underrated in training and racing that people don't give enough credence to? Maybe not because it doesn't seem like you worry about too much like these fine optimizations you're trying to nail the basics but anything you're like man i can't believe people aren't doing this hmm. I, I don't think i'll be the guy that's gonna be like the outlier in in doing something um i see there's a lot of guys that um like to to do a lot of the the arrow stuff um which for sure probably has has its benefits but um I'm not really the uh, that big of a of an aero guy when it comes to riding the the road bike. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to to be comfortable on my bike and uh, wear comfortable stuff. Um, you won't see me in a skin suit during the race. Okay, all right, I'm with you on that. What's your biggest inspiration to keep pushing forward in a really tough sport? Um, like not letting my potential go to waste. I think is, is a big one because I feel like I know myself and I, I've i seen what I can do. And I feel like it's it, it's a shame to to not like fully go for it and see where I can end up. Um, and I also just love winning. Yeah, that feeling <laughs> it's hard to replicate by anything yeah. else in life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what definitely. is a piece of advice that you would share with younger cyclists who might listen to this and be like, man, this guy's accomplished so much. I want to try and get on his level. Just like a little nugget, you've already given people a ton of inspiration, but is there anything that comes to mind that you, that you would find be very helpful to other riders? Um, I would say, you know, uh, have fun for sure. But I think that's what everybody would say to them. Um, for Maybe sure. Maybe not. You, you, I feel like you could give them even a, a bit more of a tip. Um, I feel like what got me here is um, I had a huge support from my parents. Um, and I think it's 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 not impossible, but it's going to be hard if you don't have, as a, as a really young kid, somebody that supports you. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say, you know, 
try to to find even if it's just like a, a buddy or or a, a local club you know i feel like you're gonna need support at, at one point to get somewhere and uh i would say don't be afraid to ask people for help for tips and you know to to get under somebody's wing somewhere um to so to get some help you know if you can get uh support from your parents i think that that's the best thing in the world if you have supportive parents um so yeah just have fun but uh you know try to get there and uh try to get some people to to help you and uh have fun along the way i think that's an amazing tip and i i think of guys that you know in the cycling community there's just something about the sport i'm sure other endurance sports but I'll talk to people and they'll kind of feel on their own. I said, Hey man, just who's the best amateur rider in your area? Like, just go talk to them. Just go say what's up. They're probably going to love to share their knowledge. So I think like you're saying, find support and it might be easier than we sometimes think. I think, you know, you're taking time out of your day to lend all this knowledge to all these other people and guys might be like, Whoa, this is that dude that I saw on the podium at worlds. Like this is crazy. And so just put yourself out there, ask for some help. You're going to find it along the way. What is the number one race that you're most looking forward to? And the last question is, what's the rest of the year going to shape up that maybe you don't know all the races that you're going to, but what else is on the calendar? Um, I'm looking forward to next year, Perry roubaix actually already. Okay. Uh, I feel like uh, that is going to be redemption time uh, because I feel like this year I should have won the race. Uh, the way I felt in uh, in during the race, I was we were in the break with with two guys, uh, with Max and Max was also so strong he could have won the race as well, um, but we both uh, it, it it ended up going south really quickly. Mm. Uh, at one point, you're thinking to yourself, oh wow, you know what am I gonna do when I cross the line with celebration and and suddenly it's uh, where's the support card and you're running back uh, the, oh. against the convoy with your bike in your hand. Um, and uh, what was the other question again? Uh, and then just what's the what other races might you be hitting up this year that people oh, can this year? Yeah, uh, I think my next race will be uh, another stage race in France, uh, Alsace, um, and then uh, there will be like uh, the championships will also come, the Euro, but you know the selections are not made for that yet. Um, and then uh, I think I will end up doing some races with uh, with pros as well still this season. I did one already. Um, but there should be some more. Um, and then I know my uh, program till uh, September. After that, it's uh, for nobody still filled in uh, because it was made, of course, the concept lineup in, in January all the way. And then uh, now somewhere in the summer, the rest of the season is going to be filled in. But there should be still some uh, interesting races coming where I, where I might be on the start line. I'm trying to remember. I was looking through the results. What the one one dot pro race that you did, and looking at the lineup. Like, do you get nervous when you're going up with the big boys, or at this point, you're just like, I got a job to do. I'm here for a reason. I'm here to start to prove myself. Um, I wouldn't say say nervous. Um, because I mean, maybe before the start, you think, okay, how how are they going to act in this race? Because you, you have no idea what the environment is like in the pro peloton. Um, but, you know, as soon as the flag dropped, it was quite simple. You know, this is still just pure racing um, uh, with just uh, at the at the highest level, of course. Um, suddenly, everybody is almost uh, as good as or better than you. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's not it's not that much different for me. It didn't feel that much different. I, I felt like like a fish in water. Um, that race that was it was nice to do. Um, I think uh, we got second in that race um, with 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 one of the guys. Um, usually, if a, if a Devo guy joins the joins the pros for a race, they have to go uh, and do some 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 dirty work. Uh, you know, the early patrolling and keeping out of the wind. Um, but I actually I beforehand I got to go and uh, I got told that I can go deeper into the race and and see if I can. Uh, can help later on uh, but uh you know the race went over the muur uh, van Gerardsbergen it's like a, a race towards uh, the bottom of the muur everybody wants their guys in good position um and we had three guys for that but they were we lost them pretty quickly in the race um so then you know they ended up looking at me to to keep the guys out of the wind 
So then I had to get uh, on the front to, to keep the guys uh, safe. Uh, of course, that uh, compromised my personal race a little bit uh, because I was like this at the bottom of the view. I think I turned <laughs> off 100. Um, and then I had to start passing guys. But uh, no, uh, you know, the break went on quite, pretty early, those 20 guys, first time already. Um, so, yeah, our guy was in there and uh, he ended up getting a good result. I I finished in the peloton somewhere, but uh, felt good. Felt good to know that uh, that I can race with these guys because uh, I think a lot of guys will think, "Oh no, the pros. What if I get dropped immediately?" Um, but no, uh, you can actually race these guys. That's awesome! What an incredible experience it had to have been. Vlad, thanks for doing this, man. Really, really appreciate it. Just so many good insights that will help so many cyclists. And we look forward to seeing what you do this year. Is the best way for people to keep up, keep up with you on Instagram? Or do you do like Twitter, YouTube? Where can people follow you the easiest? Uh, it's, I don't, I don't uh, have any regular uh, posting schedule. Um, you know, if I feel like posting something on Instagram... Uh, something might pop up. It, honestly, the best way to keep up with me is probably pro cycling stats or something, the database just. There we go. Um, but uh, yeah, for sure. I I, I post uh, on Instagram sometimes and on Twitter also. Um, but I think the, the team also posts a lot about us. So there's quite some ways to, to find out. Any parting words for the listeners? Parting words? Uh, yeah, don't think too much. <laughs> i love it man everybody thank you so much for tuning in uh please check out the other podcasts with these amazing athletes that have taken their time to share their wealth of knowledge and we'll catch you on the next one